Scentland, the land of scent. Hello and welcome everybody. Happy New Year again, happy 2020. Mm. This fragrance deserves a toast, a posit, a slauncher, a cheers or a skull. Because this fragrance is a piece of art. Ladies and gentlemen, Lapidus program by the very precious house of Ted Lapidus. Many fans out there I know of, of the house of Tepilus, Ted Lapidus because of the amazing price versus quality ratio that they represent with, with almost all of their fragrances. And it's the same here, but this is much more than just a fragrance. So let's deep dive in there. Released in 1987 by the house of Ted Lapidus, the, the parfumeur is Martin Gras, who, for example, did Charuti 1881 or did work with uh, Chevignon and Salvador Dali and, and so and so on and so forth. And um, many refer to this fragrance as a, as a 80s powerhouse. I know where they're coming from, yet this is much more than that. To me, this fragrance represents all the good things that have been has have been around uh, in the 70s and 80s, and leaves all the bad things behind. I mean, the bad things. Some of the 70s, 80s fragrances were very harsh, uh, very rugged, very t t too punchy, too unbalanced, and, and too much leaning into leather, pine, moss, uh, floral, rose, same thing. Uh, these directions, okay, just too much leaning out of the window. And the good aspects of the 80s and, 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 and 70s fragrances, they were very complex and they had uh, a tremendous performance, most of them. Now. The notes with this fragrance, wow, I mean, you have a whole lot of list. You have basically have almost all the ingredients that have ever been used in the 70s and 80s. Like, of course, I'm exaggerating, but um, you have, yeah, and I sprayed it on here. Um, huh, I should have to start. It, is, it has a freshness about it. It has a sweetness about it. Uh, it has a floral aspect. It has a... Uh, aromatic aspect about it. It has tobacco, it has lily of the valley, it has rose, it has caraway, lemon as well, some subdued lemon there, lavender, definitely uh, tobacco I mentioned. I mean, it's just, it has some, some animalic note in there, although I think civet is not in here, but there is definitely some some animalic note in here, a, a gorgeous floral uh, combination. Tobacco definitely shine in there. Pine, moss. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's an orchestra. It's piece. It's a piece of art. And it remind it, rhyme, it reminds me of those fragrances. It doesn't remind me, but it refers to combining all the best aspects of masterpieces like Koros, like Paco Rabanne pour Rome like boss number one, uh, like poison, the, the female poison from Christian Dior, and also the, the fantastic uh, Iquitos by Alain Delon. That's the category this fragrance is playing in, but it does better than each one of them It because it combines them. It combines them in a, such an artful way, such a nice blending. Okay, it's tough, it's powerful, it, it can be overwhelming if you overspray, but it's well rounded, it's well blended. It's like, it's like a second personality that you wear. It, you have to be you know, ready to wear this fragrance uh, because it's a personality in itself. So I just use it underneath the shirt, spray twice and it lingers on throughout the day. It gives me these whiffs of fantastic sense, sophistication. And why do I say it's art? Um, it reminds me strongly of art. Um, because it makes me feel special, it makes me feel relaxed and sometimes invigorated. It's like a book, it's like a painting I'm looking at. It makes my fantasy go, my, my, my moods swing. It's like good progressive rock music from the 70s and 80s. It's multi-layered, multi-faceted. Um, in contrast to nowadays fragrances, which are just, um, which are just, you know, sitting on the shelf for one year and then going away. This is more than 30 years there and, and it's, it's still going strong. Um, this is like, uh, I referred, I was referring to music. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, we bought 
albums, you know, of bands, of real musicians playing real music on real instruments, okay? Singing with their own voices, you know, doing complex albums that you bought, took in your hands, you went through the songs and you kind of digested that art, okay? Especially if it was a good, if it was a good album. Uh, nowadays, and I can, that's, that's how this fragrance is, okay? From A to Z. Compared to nowadays, uh, music, it's Spotify, okay? You don't buy an album anymore. You don't listen to an entire album, surely. You pick this song, that song, next song. I like it, don't like it, next one. Bam, bam, bam. That's how fragrances work today. And that's why the shelf life is also, is also sh so short. It's just next one, next one, next one. Those times when you took an album and you went through the songs, when you took enough time away or apart to smell a fragrance and give it time to develop, those, those ones are gone, okay? So the market has changed and I acknowledge that. It's no problem, it's, that's a fact, okay? Yet, there is a customer base that is still very loyal to this fragrance and it is because Many people, and many young people as well, many, many newcomers to the fragrance uh, uh, world are appreciating this because they give this time, this sniff, and they say, wow, my good guy, oh my, what is this? You know what the magic with this fragrance is? You smell all the notes, not all the notes. You have to, you have to be, an, you have to, I am exaggerating. You have, I don't know, maybe 20 plus notes in this, okay? But you smell half a dozen notes in this one, easy, easy. Especially if you let it dry down, if you if you let it you know linger, and if you let it proceed, if you give it time, uh, it smells to me very French. For me, it's very it gives me a French. When I spray two sprays underneath the shirt, let it linger. To me, it smells tremendously French. It's just French. I feel my I feel like I'm in Paris of, in the 1980s. Okay, um, it's fantastic. It's total mood booster. It's it, it, like a good book or good piece of music. This is. Fantastic, or a good wine, actually, yes. Um, so, longevity, and this longevity and performance and silage and all that. Another thing in regards to today's market, uh, fragrance market, eau de parfum, extrait de parfum, and all that. You know what I'm talking about, bullshit, basically. Uh, they feed you with this information, and then you have an eau de parfum of today uh, vanishing in two hours, okay, or three hours. This is another toilet, okay? It lasts you for... I don't know, 72 hours and beyond, on clothes even more. It's incredible. Or the toilet, okay? It's just, it's just all about the intention of the parfumeur and the house, the brand, uh, obviously, and of course, related to the budget as well, and the overall aim, what they want to achieve with that fragrance. In this case, they wanted nuclear performance and they presented it to the market, still going strong today. So age-wise, I wouldn't even say anything. Uh, just, you know, it might not be your taste, I'm, I'm glorifying this fragrance, I'm saying it's a piece of art, but it might, might not be up to the taste of many people because it smells kind of different. It smells like nothing you smelled before. It smells very special. But what I, what I do say, do not leave this earth without smelling at least a sample of this fragrance, okay? Smell it, give it time, indulge, close your eyes. This is not to seduce anybody. You can probably, you can seduce, you can gather compliments with this one, surely, but it's not the aim. Just, let it become a part of your own history, part of your own feelings, like a good music, like a good wine, like a good book. Um, give it time, relax, uh, enjoy the feel of the 80s bottle. You know, spray it at the, the, the top notes and, and venture into the dry down. It's, it's a bless, I can tell you, it's a bless. So I'm totally mesmerized by this fragrance. Uh, as I say, uh, Martin Gras here together with the, the, the House of Ted Lapidus have done a tremendous job in 87. And I've mentioned a few other fragrances there, um, like Quarles, like Paco Rabanne like Boss Number One, like Ipquitos, like Poison. Um, this is combining the best of the best of those superior fragrances into one single bottle here. Lapidus Porum by Ted Lapidus is an absolute piece of art. Again, question of taste, but if you give it time, you can at the end say, I don't like it. Yeah, it's too, 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 too animalic. It's too, too rosy, too tabac, too much this and that, the other thing, but it will, I guarantee you, it will get your nose and mind going if you just 
just lay down on the couch and you know, give yourself time like you would with a piece of piece of art like with with, with, a, with a book or 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 with with a, with a rock album okay or, or opera uh, classical music absolutely here yes classical music bottled but also rock and roll bottled progressive old style rock and roll you know um fantastic just think about it think about it step probably a, a step back from from today's fragments and say okay they're great for everyday use you know maybe if i want to go to the club or you know, feel fresh on, you know, in the morning and go to the workplace. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get why Invictus can work and I get why Aventus can work and I, I get all that. But take a step back and, and let uh, this masterpiece give you an idea and an, um, an inspiration and maybe look back on how fragrances of, of a different time have been blended, conducted and released. Um, for you to enjoy. So, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This was Chris from Sandland, the land of sand, with Lapidus Porum by the precious house of Ted Lapidus from 1987. My goodness, I was 15 years old. I didn't smell it at the time. It was released in the same year as Alain de Ronsiquitos. Just comes to my mind. Thanks very much. I'll leave you, but I take this with me. Take care and see you soon for another review. Bye-bye.